Well, I'm standing on a gravel road in the middle of western South Dakota, and this is the beginning of what I hope is a series of epic adventures for this year. So, we're gonna get things going right now. Headed in, Antelope Mission, episode one. Let's do this. But before we get into all that, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ryan Pinkow. I consider myself an avid outdoorsman, and although I'm not a professional videographer, I've somehow always found myself documenting my outdoor experiences through the lens of a camera. My passion for adventure led me to discover the world of wild food. Exploring the world as a hunter, fisherman, and even forager opened my eyes to the connection between epic places and good food. I've made it a mission to spend my fall chasing wild ingredients and doing what I love sharing stories and creating amazing food. And this is the meat season. little scouting mission update it's still pretty warm it's like almost 80 but I've been riding the bike around a bunch I rode back super far into this piece of ground right here it's like all public for like six miles or something rode way back in there checked a couple water holes that were completely dry just like <laughs> absolute mud flats not even a drop of water in there I found one though that has water in it and it is obliterated with tracks so I think I'm gonna set up a blind on that one. I think I'm gonna hold off right now though, cause it's like two miles in and I just got back to the truck. So still need to find two more spots, but uh, I don't know, I'm glad I found that one. That one looks like it could be super, super good. There's so many tracks there that looks like they've been hitting it quite often. So stoked about that one, gonna keep moving. I got two more long bike rides I think I'm gonna do or some hikes, whatever, try to get in deep and the water anywhere within a mile of the road just seems to be all dried up so you got to get way the heck back in there which is kind of what I was thinking anyway but it'd be nice to find one easy one <laughs> there's so little water out here but the cattle are nuts where there is water so I'm trying to get in areas where there aren't really any cows <sighs> try to get some blinds up whoa all right time to take a little break storms rolling in I don't know if you can see that Definitely found one spot there that looked pretty good. It was absolutely hammered with tracks. There was one herd out there, probably 10 does, with a really, really nice buck. So I'm probably gonna set that one, but I'm gonna go look for some more spots because there's gonna be three of us hunting. So definitely need a couple more really good sits, but that one, that one looks like a really, really good chance to shoot one from a blind. So give it all I can the rest of the day, find two more spots and uh, we'll be looking pretty good for uh, for the hunt, but I'm gonna keep moving. I don't know if this rain's actually supposed to hit here, but we did get some rain yesterday when I was just kind of messing around, but that was a good, good little rip. Did like a little five mile loop in there. And uh, all right, one spot down. rain just let up I got the spotter out and uh, I just found a freaking sweet buck I'll have to show you I got the spotter he's way the hell out in this flat I probably got to go in there about two and a half miles to get to where the water's at I think and uh, there's a few antelope kind of speckled out in this flat through here but it's a lot of area and there's not a lot concentrating it looks like most of the water out there is dry so until I get back in there it's gonna be hard to say what's what yeah sweet buck 
pretty fun at least you get to see tons of them out here <laughs> but he's pretty much in the uh untouchable zone right now there's literally nothing between us <laughs> so can't even really make a play on him might as well just watch him it's pretty cool all right guys check this out so i'm just riding back right now just checked a couple more spots and uh this part of south dakota is actually loaded with prickly pear cactus so this is what we're looking for Ooh. Yeah, money. Ooh. We're gonna eat them up. I got like three hours of light left, so I'm trying to move. Gotta check one water hole way, way out in this flat. And uh, still make it back to the truck. Hopefully checking three more spots after this one. So, gonna have to keep the foot on the gas. All right, I'm gonna score some cactus real quick. Precious cargo. Freaking right. <laughs> Let's go find some antelope now. It's super nice. There's like nobody else out here. I've seen a couple other guys bow hunting. Is pretty much it. But maybe like three trucks. <laughs> and I've been driving like hundreds of miles basically around here. Just kind of going back and forth looking through. Whoa. Time to buckle up. Okay, I have located another water hole that is uh, holding water. And there's a bunch of antelope kind of in this area. I didn't see any at that water, but I got the blind on my backpack, got the bike out. So I'm gonna ride, it's like a mile and a quarter, mile and a half into that spot and uh, just gonna go straight for it get out there hopefully see something if not I'm still gonna put the blind up and uh, we'll just have to sit it when we come back Whew. all right getting psyched up because it's getting really hot time to ride all right guys I'm like whoo, about a mile in right now and uh, can't quite see the water yet, but just saw a herd of about 15 blow out of here. They saw me riding in and they just ran up on the hill there and they're chilling out. Whoa, all right. I can put this down before I crash. Catch up with you when I can see the water. We have made it. It's extremely dry this year. I'm sure if you've seen that on the news, just like mega drought, especially out here western South Dakota but hunting antelope over water seems like definitely one of the best ways to do it with a bow so that's why I'm putting in so much time just looking for optimal spots and check this one out endless grass flat and then oh, beautiful I'm just going to scope the area for tracks see kind of where the antelope are hitting it. I've already seen some in this area, so I know they've been using it. 
but I don't want to go where the cows seem to be hitting. So I'm going to drop down in here, scope this out, find a spot and get this baby set up. From my experience, antelope like a nice gradual approach in. So there's only like a couple of spots that have that. So that's where I'm going to start looking for tracks. But the top of this berm is tracked out. A lot of cow tracks too, but quite a few antelope tracks in here. A couple of ducks. Everything comes to these water holes. You can see behind me, it's like a dry riverbed going down through here. Not a drop of water in that anywhere, but right here. Everything. Everything needs water out here. All right, I'll show you what I'm kind of looking for. I literally just walked the whole perimeter of this thing. And uh, there's scattered antelope tracks. But then I got right down on this bigger flat area. This is all cow tracks down through here, but when you get down right through here, there's like a 20 yard section. And these are all antelope, these littler tracks, cow tracks, cow tracks. These are what we're looking for. These smaller tracks right here. All oh, from antelope in here. Oh, little turtle. Yeah, see you, dude. Crazy what you find out here in the middle of nothing when there's a little bit of water, but this looks really good. I think I'm gonna get the blind just down on this corner. So there's a little bit of shooting across to make this about a 35, 40 yard shot right here. Let's see what happens. Blind is up and uh, I got about a 40 yard shot to kind of right where we found all those tracks and then it's about 60 across. So that's a pretty good poke, but there's a lot of shooting here and uh, I think it's going to be a good setup. So I'm going to hightail it out of here. Still got one other blind to set up. I might try to get a second one up. We'll see. Ya. It's just so hot, but oh, time to go get some water. All right, I'm out, riding out. And that was a conservative mile and a half. That was more like double that. Oh boy, here we go. Made her one more bike ride and this trip's over. All right, let's check this out. That tree, it's like a hundred yards on the other side of that tree. Yeah, no, that's fine. You just nap there and I'll catch up with you on the way out. That's fine. Just, yeah, just hang out. Okay, yep. Later. Oh, the heat's getting to me. All right. Headed in, antelope mission, episode one. Let's do this. We're almost in, just over this hill. And we're at the spot. We're like just over a mile in right now. All right, finish this hike out and then we're, then we're on. That's a wrap on day one. Didn't film too much. There just was a lot of running around. We ended up putting up camp, crashing for a while. We were just so zapped from driving, but we just got out of there. Uh, there's a whole herd bedded, probably 400 yards from the water hole spot. And uh, they definitely saw us coming out, but they all stayed bedded. So they should be hanging around this area in the morning. I'm just gonna jump on the bike, head out. We got just a mile ride out, so we're losing light fast. 
I'm gonna get riding, get back to camp. We're gonna make some food and uh, see what happens. We should be catching up with my buddy TJ. Should be in camp tonight. And uh, he went and set up another spot. So we'll see what the action was. Make a game plan for tomorrow and get after him. But I'm out of here for now. That was pretty intense. So I just had that uh, that doe and like a buck fawn come in and uh, they hung around out there at like 80, came into 50, and then the battery in the camera died. And uh, they actually ended up coming in and watering. I came to fold her out on the doe 35 yards. She was standing there for probably 10, 15 seconds and I don't know, just didn't pull the trigger. So, I think we'll just see if we can wait it out. I mean, we've only been sitting here an hour and we just had some come in, so maybe we'll get a buck to slide in here. Even a small buck would be sweet, but I don't know. That one just didn't feel right, so let them go. But that was super sick. <laughs> oh, they came right in. I wish the battery wouldn't have died. They were literally right there. <laughs> so, 35 right on the button. I got a buck. He just came over the hill. I've been watching him. I got the phone scope set up right now. Just kind of checking him out. And then a freaking coyote comes out. And the buck like doesn't even care. It's a nice buck. He's really nice. I got him in the phone scope right now. But he's out there probably. Oh, he just bet it down. probably better on this hill at about 600 yards oh maybe 500 he's not that far but he bedded right up at the top of the hill he's a nice nice buck yes he's eyeing this water up too he just needs to come down Come on down here for a little drink. God, come on, dude. All right, we're about to head in. I'm hunting with TJ today. He scored last night, so uh, he's done. So we're just gonna go in. We're gonna sit that same water from last night. A lot of action yesterday, so hopefully we can get one to close. It's supposed to be a lot hotter today, like almost 20 degrees warmer. Super clear out. I think we got a good shot at something dropping into that water in the first couple hours of light, but we'll see how it goes. We're already a little bit late. You can see it's just cracking, cracking light right now. So we're going to motor in there, get in, get set up. Here we go. I'm not gonna lie, it just went down. <laughs> so, uh, I have no idea what you've even seen from this hunt so far, but whew, I'm shaking. It's been an absolute grind. Today, we just committed to this water hole. We got hella burned yesterday, it was insane, but 
it's like 85 degrees. TJ's freaking sitting here in his underwear. <laughs> and uh, I freaking blew it this morning, not gonna lie. I had a group of does come in and I just made a piss poor shot, terrible. And uh, whew, I don't know, we were just, we knew that that was kind of maybe gonna be our opportunity for the day. And we've been sitting here, it's like, I don't even know, like three o'clock or something. The la it's 1.30. 1.30, yeah. okay. The last antelope we saw was at freaking 9 a.m. So, Doe just came in right across the water. Literally zero chance to even get the camera on or anything. She just came in right outside the blind right here. Came around, ranger at 41. She came a couple of steps closer, put the 40 pin on and let it rip. And uh, tons of blood right at the shot. So, she ran over the hill, was moving pretty good. So, we're gonna go out there, probably look for the arrow quick and then just reassess, stick with us. Just found the arrow right here. And it looks pretty good. Clean pass through, just coated. But there's a hell of blood trail going out here. Let's just put that. thinking just because we didn't see her go down we just we should just walk up on this hill yeah and just glass from up there for me yep but we, we watched her run out in this flat right here she just went over this little berm but we didn't get visual on her going down there was a couple other does out there they continued on we did not see the one that i just shot with them so Whew. we're gonna fingers crossed get this one all right we're gonna hike up there and catch up with you in a second So, I went back to get packs. Couldn't really find the blood trail too much. Ryan just walks over the barn and he's like, oh, we got her, baby. We got her. That's a happy dude right there. Look at that guy. Dude. dude. It's freaking down, buddy. Dude, give me a hug, dude. <laughs> dude, I can't, dude. <laughs> dude, freaking down. That's what I said. I was just gonna go up there and just start looking around and I just, uh, I was looking out in that grass, zero blood. And I just saw a white spot put the vinyls up way out there. It's oh, like yeah. 100 yards. Donzo. Yeah, that's a big go. That is sweet. pack out of the season and it's feeling pretty good right about now so got about a mile to go meet you at the truck All right, so we're finally back from South Dakota. Things got a little crazy there and we ended up just driving home after that trip, but I'm home now and I'm ready to cook some antelope meat. So we already processed that whole thing like you saw and uh, this meat is freaking insane. So I'm looking forward to doing it right now. We're gonna do some carne asada burritos and I'm gonna use the back strap off of this antelope. We're gonna get it out and we're just gonna get to put it all together right now. So the thing with antelope meat that you kind of got to remember is it's a really different texture than like any other type of venison. It's a really tender, soft meat, and it really benefits from being cooked super rare. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm actually going to butterfly it open, and we're going to pound it flat, and then I'm going to sear it on the grill. And that's what's going to keep it super tender. We're going to cook it really hot, 
for a very short amount of time, keep it super rare, and then just slice it thin. simple carne asada marinade. You can make a billion variations of it, but cilantro, oil, soy sauce, a little bit of acid. So we're going to use orange juice today and like game meat with orange juice works so well together. Something about that, like you can use lime and everything too. It's a little more of a harsh acid, but that orange juice is super mellow. Works awesome with antelope meat, which doesn't have like a super distinct gamey flavor like some other venison does. Just gonna start with some soy sauce. I don't know, maybe about a half a cup or so. None of this is super exact. Just uh, no matter what you do, it's gonna come out good. It just depends on how thick you're gonna have it. So with all this meat, we wanna make sure that it at least is kind of thick. Soy sauce, brown sugar going in. That's gonna add some sweetness and when we throw it on the grill, it's gonna caramelize super fast. So it doesn't have to cook for very long. And then we're gonna go on with just some neutral oil. This is avocado oil. It works good just because it has a really high smoke point, so you don't have to worry about it burning or if you're doing it in your house, it doesn't smoke out your whole place. And then just sriracha. I'm gonna use it for heat. You could use like jalapeno or some kind of serrano pepper, but we're gonna put that in later. We're gonna make some guac anyway. So a little sriracha in there just for a little bit of heat. Start building that flavor up and just whisk it all together. Just whisking it enough to get that oil incorporated, you'll see it kind of come together real quick. And as long as it tastes pretty good. Ooh, yeah. So I'm gonna go with the orange juice now. So this is gonna be the acid part. Really not necessary to use oranges, but something if you're using apple cider vinegar, lime juice, something like that. But orange juice is the move for antelope. Roll it, get those juices flowing a little bit. and just make sure you catch the seeds when you go in. I'm gonna do the juice from a whole orange. Well, we got some seeds in there. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna throw a little bit of garlic powder in there. You could mince some fresh garlic, but for this marinade, it's gonna marinate for just a short amount of time. So I'm going with the powder just cause it hydrates, gets in the mix really, really quick. The meat's really thin though, so the, it will penetrate a little bit as we marinate it. Get that all incorporated. And then just twist off like half a bunch of cilantro. Just a rough chop through that, it's good. You don't have to beat it up too bad. And then the last thing I'm gonna add in there is just some cumin, and I do about a tablespoon of that. It is pretty strong, so you don't have to go too nuts with it. If you really like the flavor of that, you can really pump it up if you want, or if you were gonna make it more spicy, this would be the move right here to go in with some cayenne pepper or some chili powder. Oh, yeah, that's gonna work. So the meat, I'm just gonna throw in a gallon Ziploc. It's the easiest way to just get it to marinate, and then I'll just dump it all in there. So all three going in, and they're just gonna hang out till we're ready to cook it. You can marinate it for 10 minutes, an hour, really doesn't matter. Um, you know, the longer you sit, the more it's gonna penetrate, but this meat's only like a quarter inch thick, so it gets into the meat pretty quick. And that oil is kind of our fat. This game meat is super, super lean. So cooking it with that oil on it is gonna keep it nice and moist. It's gonna keep it from getting too messed up on the outside, but that sugar will caramelize. We'll get a nice char on it. And then just mix it around, let it hang out while we do everything else. We're gonna make some guac. I'm gonna do guac and salsa. I did buy salsa. I mean, I didn't feel like I needed to also make that. I'm making everything else. First thing, gonna open up some avocados. I got some here. Luckily I found ripe ones, but the easiest way to do it is just run your knife right into it, spin the avocado around on the blade, you open it right up, pop the pit right out. So 
So I'm just gonna gut them all right into this bowl. And these are nice ripe ones. They're super soft. So I should be able to mash them up really good. I'm gonna use a fork for that though. So in the guac, I'm just gonna keep it super clean and simple. Just a little bit of garlic and uh, a shallot, some green onions, jalapeno, cilantro, a little lime juice. down pretty small. Again with this, it's hard to really mess the ratios up, just freaking load it up. As long as everything's really fresh, it's gonna be freaking delicious. Last thing, I'm just gonna do a squeeze of lime into the guac and that is done. It's just gonna chill out over here and just wait for everything else to be done. We're gonna fry some potatoes and those cactus we picked out there on the prairie, those little prickly pear cactus, these are just blanched ones. Just boil them in a little bit of water with some jalapenos and onion just to cook them down. Now they're super soft. You can actually eat them just like this, but I'm gonna actually mix this with the salsa. So I have this, we're gonna just combine them together and that's gonna be a nice little topping for the burrito. and then just not touch them for a couple minutes and they'll start to brown really good on that side and then we'll just mix them around we're trying to get kind of a crispy exterior on them so we can get some crunch inside these burritos All right, I'm just gonna throw it on this Traeger right here. Normally I do it on like an open flame grill just to get it really charred up, but we got this thing cranked to the max, so it should be pretty damn good. We're gonna cook it super fast, like maybe two to three minutes on each side. It's gonna sear super fast, even though it's not on direct flame but we want to keep that antelope meat super rare. It's going to be ultra tender that way. All right, I'm just going to pull this meat off now. It's only been on here for maybe like five minutes, but like I said, the antelope meat cooks super fast. And we want to keep it really rare. So I'm just going to toss down this cutting board, let it rest for like five, 10 minutes, and then we're going to slice it up. All right, we got that meat off. It's just resting. So real quick, we're just going to knock together a little bit of sauce. It's just sour cream and some sriracha. It's super simple. Just going to put, I don't know, Couple of heaping tablespoons of that. Just a couple squirts of sriracha. Mix that together. There, and then we're gonna take that cactus we had there, and I'm just gonna add some of this salsa just on top of it and mix it together. And this is a little bit spicy salsa, but It'll be a nice thick consistency because if you get your salsa too watery it's going to just soggy out your burrito so we don't want that so we're going to mix with the cactus nice chunky kind of topping in there build it up and we're good to go so we had that meat just resting for a little bit now we're going to slice it should retain most of the juice but biggest thing is we want to cut it against the grain so the grain in this back strap runs this direction so we want to cut it this way instead of having like super long strips we're just going to cut it in half this way and then we'll cut it just like this. And like I said, we wanted to keep it super rare. So you can see we got a nice pink inside. And that's going to be ultra tender meat. So I just dropped this tortilla in the pan for a little bit just to keep heat it up a little bit. It'll become way more pliable. So when we're rolling the burritos, it won't break apart as easy. All right, so we're gonna start on the bottom with some guac. We'll just load it up. Go in with some meat on top of that. There's some cheese on top of the meat. At least it'll get a little melty then. Some crispy potatoes on top of that. 
And then we'll do our cactus salsa. Just a little sriracha sour cream on top. And then we'll roll it. It's just a nice little baby. All right, so I got that thing all nice and tidied up. We're just gonna put it in a hot pan. I'm gonna sear it like on the seam side and then just roll it over to the top and we'll get a nice crust on both sides. It'll be nice and crispy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can hear that's nice and crispy. There we go. So that meat's super rare still, ultra tender, and that guac just really wraps everything together. A little bit of cheese, and uh, I think we're in business here. All right, let's try one of these things. Mm. Yeah, that's the deal. That's the deal right there. I'm gonna, hold on. Just make this. Just do it. Even if you don't have any game meat, just go buy like some skirt steak, flank, something. This is unreal. Doing that antelope trip was just absolutely insane. Super stoked that we were successful. Ended up taking two antelope on that trip. And uh, we got meat for a while. Me and TJ both scored, so there's gonna be a lot of, uh, a lot of our buddies getting some, a lot of our buddies getting to try a lot of this meat. And uh, fingers crossed we get it done the rest of the season. But that was a super fun trip. And uh, I think that recipe's a winner right there. Thanks for watching and uh, stick around for more of the meat season. Peace. Home to the mountain, the